not going to be long at all this evening. So uh, very short, very quick to the point, and uh, then we're going to we'll talk about something else and let you go. Uh, John chapter number eighteen. This morning I preached about Jesus being the way, and if you were here, you understand. Uh, he said, "I'm the way. I, he's the way out. He's the way in. He's the way through. He's the way up." And uh, we had a, 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 a lot of folks this morning that said they got helped by the service today. And tonight, I want to look at him and the middle part of that verse being the truth and not about Jesus by himself, but just truth in general, truth. John chapter number 18, and we're here uh, in a very contentious, uh, uh, upheaval time at the end of the Lord's ministry when they're talking about crucifying him. He had been here for three and a half years, done stuff nobody had ever done, had the world turned upside down. Everybody was talking about it. Everybody was making a big thing about Jesus. And here he stood before Pilate, who had, humanly speaking, his future in his hands. And and I want you to look here at what uh, Pilate said to him in verse number uh, 37. Look at eight, chapter 18, verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. And that's something. Jesus, he he didn't just say, I am the truth. He said, if you're of the truth, you'll hear my voice. And then Pilate said, verse 38, says unto him, what is truth? Philosophers and scientists and historians have been asking that ever since. What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? They cried out all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. We'll look back in that verse where Jesus said, I came to bear witness to the truth. Pilate looked at him that day and said, What is truth? I want to use that as thought this evening, and I want to preach on the subject, I want the truth. I want the truth. Life's too short uh, to go through believing a lie. I want the truth. Now, this was in a time when uh, the, uh, there had never been an event like this in history. Religious unrest, to say the least. Civil unrest, to say the least. Political unrest, to say the least. Reminds you of anything that we got nowadays? Pilate uh, was going over there, and he, he had the Lord in his hands, and, you know, they sent him back from Herod to Pilate, Herod to Pilate, Herod to Pilate, and uh, he didn't know what to do about it. Pilate is your perfect uh, example of a politician. He had Jesus standing there beside him, and he said, Now, I really don't have no fault with this guy, but if I don't turn him over to let him be crucified, I'm, I might get voted out. I'm not going to get voted in this year. And that's why a politician couldn't tell the truth if his life depended on it. It's because his job, he, he makes a living making everybody thinks he agree with them. I, I, listen, I'd rather dig ditches for a living than be a professional politician. I mean that. I, if I got a job where I have to lie all, the whole time, I'd just soon have an honest job selling liniment or something, like, like I used to say, you know, or Rawlins products. Uh, like I said, it's a flea market. You kids don't even know what that is. Uh, but you know what? Uh, uh, old pilot, he said, now, if I let him go, they're not going to vote for me. And if I have him crucified, they're not going to vote for me and my wife's going to get mad at me, and I'm scared of her, and I'm scared of them, and I'm scared of them. So what am I going to do? He just says, uh, I'm just not going to be involved in this. Just back out. Uh, there's your crook right there. There's your crook. You know, if a man can't give you a straight answer uh, when you ask him a question, I didn't like to ask somebody something, and they start beating around the bush, going, way around there. Uh, 
Did you do this? Well, da, 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 da. wait a minute. Wait. Did you do it? Uh, can you say yes or no? Uh, yeah, nobody says yes or no anymore. It's going go way around through here somewhere to make you think this or make you think that. Just straight up, brother, yay or nay. Uh, did you do it? All right. If you didn't, all right. If you did, do it and take consequence. If you didn't, do it and take consequence. Quit beating around the bush. And Pilate's wife come to him that day, and she said, now listen, I'm going to tell you something. I dreamed about that guy. You better leave him alone. You better stay out of this, I'm telling you. Now, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but I'm going to try to tell you what to do, try to tell you what to do, try to tell you what to do, try to tell you what to do. That's what they always say when they're going to try to tell you what to do. When your wife said, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, she's getting ready to tell you what you should do. Uh, you ain't been married long if you don't know that. Uh, but uh, anyway, she said, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, honey, but I've suffered many things in a dream because it don't do nothing, have nothing to do with them. Yes, ma'am. Uh, whatever you say, darling. And then you know what? He'd have been better off to listen to her. He'd have been better. She was right. She was right. I'm trying to be up to you now, ladies. Don't get mad at me. Let's have it fair. Let's have it both ways. Uh, sometime man ought to listen to her. That's right. And uh, he, he, he wound up getting crucified. But he said, I want the truth. So I want to say just a few things. going to be really quick. And the first thing I'll say when I want the truth, when I'm in trouble, when I'm in trouble, I want the truth. When I'm in trouble, tell me the truth. Years ago, some weirdo nut with a low IQ came out with a song, and this person had a low IQ that wrote this song, but not as low as the people who like to hear it. And its song said, tell me lies, tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. And I thought, that is the dumbest thing I have ever heard in my life. And I thought, there are actually people like that. I have met them. I met him, uh, a man cheating on his on his on his woman, or on his on his wife, or whatever. And and she said, just just don't tell me, just tell me, just tell me you love me. Just I don't even want to listen. You know what I want? I want the truth. Amen. Amen. If you're cheating, tell me. If you're being faithful, tell me. Tell, I want the truth. When I'm in trouble, tell me the truth. You say, well, it's hard to accept. Yeah, it is, but telling them lies, them lies, them sweet little lies. Uh, it's poison, brother. I, 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 don't, I don't want some nut telling me everything's all right when it ain't. I mean, when you're having marriage problems uh, and you go to a counselor or you maybe even go to an attorney or something like that, uh, you don't want the counselor to say, everything's fine. You don't have any problems. Your relationship is perfect. They're being honest with you. No. You'll pay somebody to lie to you? Absolutely not. Uh, listen, I want the truth. Look, dude, tell me the truth. Is it bad? Tell me. How bad is it? Tell me. When I'm in trouble, I want the truth. If I've got financial trouble, I want the truth. I want the truth. I mean, if they're getting ready to come down, if the bank, uh, if the bank writes you a letter and that bank said, hey, you've overdrawn your account, do you turn that letter and just say, I don't want to read it. I don't want to read it. Just tear it up and throw it in the grave. No, no. I want the truth. Tell me if I'm broke. Tell me. If, I'm, uh, if, I, if I owe a big bill, you ever get a big bill in the mail? And you can just tell them things, can't you? Oh, Lord. I got mine another day, my taxes, and um, I'm, I have all that land up there that I got from my, from my, when my mom passed away, 27 acres up at the end of Hoppy Tom. And uh, I, seen, I seen that come in the mail. Got three of them, okay, divided up into three parts or another. And, the ta and it said McDowell County Tax Office. And I went, ugh. Every year at this time, I know what that is. Anybody, anybody have that same feeling? You just get sick when you see that envelope. And you think, ugh. Now, I'm not going to say, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. You do that a few years, brother, and you ain't going to have no land. I just said, tell me the truth. Open it up, $1,800. I almost threw up. I said, oh, Lord, help me. But I said, I want the truth. I want the truth. Anybody want to buy 26 acres? <laughs> Uh, uh, but uh, I don't want to sell it because I don't want nobody moving in on us. Uh, we don't want no, no neighbors. Like but I, I, I tell you, brother, uh, uh, listen, uh, I, I want the truth. I mean, let's just go ahead and get this over with. Let's just get this over with, and we'll pay it. We'll pay it. I guess we'll pay it. And then when I'm in trouble, I want the truth. I, I don't understand people that don't want the truth. I 
don't understand people. They, they say, I don't want to go to that church because they talk about hell. Well, do, you, do you want us to tell the truth? Why you, what do you go to church for? Look, if there's one place on the blessed planet, you ought to hear the truth. It's in the house of God. Amen? Listen, if I had a preacher that never preached on hell, I'd get out of that God-forsaken morgue so fast it'd make your head spin. I don't want to go to a church where a preacher ain't got enough guts or faith to preach there's a hell. You say, well, it upsets people. You don't go to church to get patted on the back. You go to church to hear the truth. There's a judgment day. There's a heaven. There's a hell. There's a judgment on sin. There, you say, well, don't, it's always just doom and gloom. You want the truth or not? You want the truth or not? My job is to tell you the truth. I want the truth when I'm in trouble. I know people say, well, uh, I, I'm shacking up, and if I go to church, I know they're going to get on it. Well, you, well, you want the truth, don't you? What do you want to do? Get up here and say, "Never, you're, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Everything's going to be cool. No, no. You want the truth. You want the truth when you're in, when you're in trouble. If you're about ready to get fired on your job, you want the truth. If you're about ready to lose everything you got, you want the truth. If your mate is cheating on you, you want the truth. You know, it's bad enough to cheat on somebody, but then lie about it and make them feel like they're crazy. I mean, I ain't going to ask. Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll lie to you, and you think, well, maybe I'm losing my mind. Maybe I'm going crazy. How about this? Just tell the truth. I want the truth when I'm in trouble. Number two, I want the truth when I'm scared. When I'm scared, I want the truth. If there's a boogeyman outside my yard <laughs> and he's got a knife coming in, I won't know it. Don't come and say, Danny, you ain't got nothing to worry about. No, tell me the truth. If I'm in trouble, if I'm in danger, and I'm scared, tell me the truth, brother. Tell me the truth. Now, here's what we're doing in our generation. Uh, uh, they're, they're coming out. Here's, what, here's what's going on with this coronavirus junk, for example. I'm not saying people ain't getting sick. I'm saying this thing has been politicized. It's been politicized. It's a political weapon now. And it's divided people into political groups. They, I don't know of any other kind of sickness that's ever done that in my lifetime. That's never happened before. I mean, I don't ever remember people splitting, voting different because of cancer or because of... Now, AIDS, there was a lot of political disagreement on it, but nothing like this, this coronavirus stuff. And, 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 and people, I hear people all the time say, Brother Danny, I don't know what the truth is. Uh, somebody puts out one video that says this. Somebody puts out another video that says that. Somebody else puts out another video that says the other. Somebody else puts out another video. I don't, I don't, I, I, what's the truth? What's the truth? Well, I, I, that, that is a very good question. And here's what they do. They say, studies show, recent studies. So you got a bunch of people sitting around in a room. And they want you to think that most Americans approve of being transgender, let's just say. Right? Let's just say that. Well, they go into a place where most people do and take a poll. Be like, I can make my own poll. We can make our own poll. Shine up Baptist Church. We can make a poll. All right, watch this. I will now make a poll. How many of you people in here tonight, you believe that the Bible is is the Word of God. Would you raise your hand, please? You believe the Bible, Lord of God. I think that's, I think that's 100%. All right, let's just say 99, 100% in here tonight. Now, I can do this. I can have that printed up on about 10 sheets of paper and look all official and everything, and I can say a recent study has shown that 99% of Americans believe the Bible is the Word of God. You're all Americans, right? See what I done? I just made a poll, and that I determined what I wanted that poll to say before I ever took it, so I can push it on everybody else. So they'll think, "Oh my goodness, I'm the only one that don't believe." I better get on board and believe like that. And the pressure is put on them to join. Can't you see what's going on? That's the way it is about voting. That's the way it is about Democrat and Republican. They determine what they want you to think, what they want you to do. Then they take a poll of a bunch of people coming out of Hooters one night and about half drunk, and they say, how do you feel about Joe? And they said, we love him, and 95% of the people polled love Joe. 
Can you see that? That ain't the truth. That ain't the truth. Now, I'm not being political tonight. I'm trying to make a point. I'm trying to make a point. You know that old king there in the Bible, he, he, wanted to, he had come up against something one time, and they said, now, now look, king. They said, uh, uh, you, you go to a prophet. You need a prophet of God to tell you what to do. And they said, you got any prophets around here? He said, yeah, there's this one over there, but I hate him. Because he's always telling me something negative. Oh, Micaiah, you know. And, and he said, I hate him. And you know what? I, and they said, well, what do you want to do? Tell, what do you want him to do? Tell you a lie? Remember when the battle was fought there and, and uh, what's his name? David's boy that rebelled. Um, what's that boy? Absalom. And he rebelled. And, you know, they hung his hair, his hair hung him on a tree head. And they set a dart through his uh, heart and killed him there. And the battle was sore, and David wanted to know what was going on. And about that time, a rider coming. And they said, somebody come, here come the mailman. Here he comes. That's how they got the news back then. And he come running in and jumped off his horse, and he said, how goes the battle? He said, all is well, king. All is well. I saw a tumult here over there and everything, but I, I had no big deal. And he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here comes another fella. Here comes another fella. He come across the desert. He jumped across there, and he said, how, the, how goes the battle? He said, not too good, King. He said, you've won the war. We've won the battle. And the king said, wait a minute. Is my son all right? Is the young man Absalom safe? See, that other guy told him everything's all right. But this guy said, King, I don't want to be the one to have to tell you this. But all the enemies of my Lord the King be as that young man is. Dead. And David wept and went to the house and cried, My son, my son, Absalom, my son. And he had to tell him the truth. Sometimes the truth is hard to take, but I want it. I want it. Look, if somebody in my family's been in an accident or killed, and that could happen and will happen to some of us eventually. I mean, who are we trying to kid here, y'all? Statistics shows some, some of us in here is going to have something bad happen to somebody in our family. That's just the way life goes. When that happens, do you want them to call you and tell you a lie? Tell me the truth. Just tell me the truth. You know, I don't understand people say, well, that preacher told me the truth. When you, when you go to the doctor, do you want him to tell you the truth? I'll talk about that in a minute. If one of my kids is hurt, I don't want to tell him, I don't want to tell him, I don't want to upset him. Tell me. Tell me the truth. I want the truth when I'm scared. I want the truth. When, they, when, they, when this coronavirus come out, that's what's so aggravating about this thing. You don't even know what the truth is. Amen. I mean, good night, brother. You don't know if it's one of them politicians says everything fine, everything fine, everything fine. Somebody will come in, nothing fine, nothing fine, nothing fine. Suicide's up. Domestic violence is up. Drug deaths are up. People are killing themselves. There's in some cities, there's more people dying from suicide and drug overdose than there was the, the, the Chinese virus. But they don't report that because they want you to think that the Chinese virus is the worst thing in the whole wide world and for some reason or another trying to bring us into submission to the government. For some reason, we all know where that's headed. They might not even understand it, but we know the chief conspirator, the devil, is whipping the whole world up, getting it ready for his man uh, to come and take over. I want the truth, brother. I want the truth when I'm scared. All of that, I said a minute ago, I want the tr when I'm sick, I want the truth. I go to the doctor. He's looking at your chart. You're, good, you're sitting like this, and he's over there reading your chart, and your blood pressure is going up just thinking, what's he going to say? You know, they say that you're actually, when they take your blood pressure in the doctor's office, it's usually higher than it was because you're, you're just, you sort of get, you, uh, you know, uh, I, no, no, I, mine was real, real low uh, the last time I had checked. And uh, I got a little thing at home to check it, but I don't think it was right. It'd say one thing, one minute, another thing, another minute, like some preachers or some politician. And, uh, and, and, the, and the doctor said, man, your blood pressure, pressure is low, Danny. I said, well, that's good, ain't it? 
And he said, yeah, as uh, long as it ain't too low. And, and I, don't, I don't, you don't pay that doctor to look at you and say, everything's fine. There is nothing wrong with you. Now, boy, it feels good for him to say that. Boy, don't you want him to look over and say, you ain't got a thing to worry about. You are in perfect health. And the chart says you eat up with cancer. The chart says your heart, you have a 90% blockage in, on your arteries in your heart. Look, if I got a 90% blockage, just tell me. Tell me. I'll have to deal with it. I want the truth when I'm sick. Amen? What good going to the doctor if you don't? Even, you say, I don't like going to that doctor. He's always fussing at me. You ought to thank God for him. Amen? Woe be unto the doctor that takes his feel good to keep you coming to get your money. Lord, if you want anybody to tell you the truth, it's the doctor. And the preacher's the same way. You want a preacher to tell you the truth. Look, if you sat down in my office in there tonight and you sit down and say, Brother Danny, what do you think about? And you ought to do that once in a while. I'm not, I'm not soliciting for counseling sessions. I've got plenty to do. I'm not bored. But once in a while, you ought to get your preacher or some preacher, somebody, and just sit down and say, what do you think's wrong with me? Tell me the truth. <laughs> he said, no, I don't want to hear it. You want the truth, don't you? Now look, uh, <laughs> if y'all did that with me and I told you, you'd get mad at me. But if you go to the doctor, you say, doctor, tell me the truth. My blood pressure, well, I can't believe you talked to me like that. Look, do you want to live? Get your blood pressure down. Cut back on your whatever, sugar, whatever. Uh, fast a little bit. Sweat a lot. Bring your blood pressure down. Listen, when I'm sick, I want the truth. Years ago up there in Marion, above Marion, in Old Fort, there used to be an old doctor, uh, old Indian doctor. Might be some of you people here might still remember him. Carrie and them's gone. Uh, uh, old Dr. Two Trees in Marion. Anybody ever remember him? Right? Y'all remember him? Lord, I remember him up there and everybody was talking about going to old two trees and he was an Indian that lived up yonder on, the, on top of a mountain in Old Fort and, and everybody said, I'm going to see Dr. Two Trees. He can look at your eyes and tell you what's wrong. That's what people said. He can look at the color of, your, of, your, of the whites of your eyes. If it's yellow, if it's yellow, they can tell you. And you know, there is, there is a lot of, there is a lot of, Validity in that, uh, as uh, a lot of a lot of doctors, health doctors, uh, teach that the, the color of your your the whites of your eyes reveal certain things. I don't know uh, if they're bloodshot. You've been drunk, I guess. Uh, but uh, uh, certain things you can tell by looking at somebody's eyes, <laughs> and or you've been up all night like we was. Uh, but you know. Uh, old two trees up yonder, they said, my, that daddy went to him one time. I don't know what was wrong with him. He took my sister, and it, one of them was back trouble or something. And old two trees, he'd tell them, I forget what he'd tell them, drink a certain kind of tea or something like that. I don't know if he knows what he's talking about or not. I don't know whatever happened to him. But they, uh, some, of them old, some of them old Indian uh, remedies like that probably had some kind of truth. But they say, look, he can just look at you and tell you. All you got to do is go get to see certain kind of roots. You know, there's some people that's hung up on that. There's roots of something that'll cure anything. No, they ain't. Not anything. There's a lot of stuff, if you would eat or not eat, prevents stuff from happening. But once you got it, brother, I don't know. You ain't going to need a root that's going to fix a lot of stuff. Uh, you, you, I, I know preachers. I know people that have a ministry, and their whole ministry is God has natural ways of healing, and if we go by God's natural ways of healing, we would never get sick. Now, that ain't true. That ain't true. God does have a lot of natural remedies, and there are things that you can do to prevent sickness and everything. But let me tell you something, buddy. I don't care what you eat or what you don't eat. Eventually, something is going to get you because you've got sin in you and you're going to get sick and you're going to get old and you're going to get weak and you're going to get feeble and you're going to die. I don't care what doctor says to the contrary. Mark my words. Hate me if you want to. You're going to get old and uglier and sick and die. Period. I don't care if you exercise 10 hours a day and take this room full of vitamins every six months. You're still going to do it. Now, you can slow it up. You can avoid certain things. 
You can make your life longer, healthier. I ain't arguing with that. I believe in that. I believe in exercise. I believe in cutting back on certain things. I believe in, I believe uh, you're supposed to eat salt as long as you sweat. A lot. Salt is good, what Jesus said. He said, my doctor said no salt. Well, I'll take Jesus' word for it. He said salt is good. Don't tell him that, preacher. I've been fussing at him. No, 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 no. I didn't say too much of it. And I didn't say do it and lay on the couch all the time. That will kill you. You got to sweat. If you can't move the sweat, get in, a, get in one of them hot things. Yeah, yeah, and turn the heat up to about 200 and sit there about an hour. That's right. That'll cook you, brother. <laughs> You're like a turkey before you get out of there. There about old two trees. He, he could diagnose all his pain. Remind me of that story. I, one of my favorite stories, that old Indian. They said there's an old Indian lived up on top of a mountain, and he said he never forgot nothing. That was his reputation around town. There's an Indian lives up there, and ain't never forgot one thing. You ever tell him one thing one time, he don't ever forget. Oh, I said, I don't believe that. I'll go up there. I'll go up there and, and, and tell him. Ask him something. Ask him anything in his life. He can tell you just like that. So he went up there, and he said, Chief, how? Come over and he said, have a seat. He said, what did you eat for breakfast 36 years ago today on a Sunday morning, July the 14th? That Indian looked back and said, two eggs. He went, whoa. Unbelievable. I can't believe it. He went down there. Man, I asked him, just like that, he told me. How does he remember that stuff like that? Well, time went by. That guy went up. It, Fifteen years later, he come back through. He come back through town. He said, "Hey, I want to ask y'all something. That old Indian still live up there on that hill? That can don't never forget nothing." They said, "He sure does." He said, "You know, I asked that guy one time what he ate fifteen years before that, and he told me to." And he said, "I can't believe it. I ain't never. I'm gonna go up there and see him. It's been all these years. I'm gonna go up there and see if he's still that sharp." He went up there and he came and said, "Chief, how?" That Indian said, "Over light." That's a memory there, brother. <laughs> He's sharp. <laughs> That's right. I'm telling you, that, that might be the way old two trees was up here in old fort. I don't know. But listen, brother, I want, I want somebody, I want Doc to tell me the truth. Just tell me the truth. Have you, it's kicking in on y'all finally. I mean, my goodness, I can't wait all night. They'll start laughing on the way home. I ain't got time to wait on y'all. Good night. Listen fast, I talk fast. Hey, listen, listen. You know what? I never could stand to talk to somebody and they beat around the bush and I can tell they're not being honest with me because they don't want to hurt my feelings. Are you like that? I mean, I don't like to get my feelings hurt, but just go ahead and do it, get it over with. Tell them if you got, I mean, if there's something bad, tell me. Sometimes somebody will ask me. They'll say, if you know that somebody is cheating on their husband or something and it's your good friend, what should you do about it? And the answer is tell them. Tell them. What would you want somebody to do? Would you want, would you want to find out and everybody knew but you? Have you ever been through that? When everybody else already knows it except you're the last one and nobody wanted to tell you? Because it didn't want to hurt your feelings. Just tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. I'll say this. And I'm through this evening. I want the truth when I'm dying. When I'm dying, brother, you tell me the truth. Amen. One of these days we're going to face death. It's uncomfortable to think about. We don't like to think about it. But, buddy, when it comes that old day, when that day comes, when we're laying there and the doctor says we've done all we can do and the doctor said we're going to have to unhook the tubes over here and all that, you know what? Come to my bedside and tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. Tell me the greatest story ever told. 
I know people. I have been in this thing a long time. And I've heard about somebody about ready to die. And somebody will call me and they'll say, Brother Danny, my uncle's over there in the hospital. He's dying. Probably won't live through the night. Can you please come over and witness to him? He's not saved. And I said, I'll, I'll, I'll try. Back when they'd let you just go in and visit anybody. And uh, uh, I'd I go over there. This happened more than one occasion. And I'll go over there and I'll take my Bible or take some tracts. And I want to go in and I'll have family members meet me at the door and say well he's resting right now and, and we don't want to bother him and one of them man and I are going to hell man and I are going to be in hell in another another two or three hours and his family's out there saying don't upset him don't go in there preaching to him Brother, listen buddy they're crazy they're crazy I want somebody to get in here and tell him the truth tell him the truth brother if a man's dying he better know the truth he better hear the truth I've been a lot of people have been used by the devil and their loved one wake up in hell because he wouldn't let a preacher in to come and talk to him when I'm dying tell me the truth I want to hear I don't want to hear about Muhammad when I'm dying I don't want to hear about Buddha Allah some fool thing like that when I'm dying, I don't want Richard Dawkins or Michael Moore or some Hollywood star to come in and say, you're just an evolved animal. When you die, that's the end of you. Some snake oil fake doctor like that. I want the truth. I want the truth. Listen, don't tell me everything's fine if everything ain't fine. Don't tell me everything's all right if everything ain't all right. I know church members, people do that all the time. Uh, and you know they're all to all pieces. Everything all right? Yes, yes. Everything's fine. No, it ain't. Just tell the truth. I want the truth. I want the truth. Pilate said, what is truth? And Jesus said, I come to bear witness to the truth. Now, truth, uh, come and get us a song tonight. Come on, Miss Desi. Truth is absolute. You know, there are people who don't believe that. The educated world believes truth is relative. And, and they'll tell you, well, this is my truth. That's, a dumb, that's the weirdest, dumbest, most ridiculous. My truth is, this is not a piano, it's an elephant. This is my truth. Okay, okay, you're smoking crack, or, you know, you... Your, your brain's slipping there a little bit. See, we know that's not an elephant. But there are people who believe, if I really believe that's an elephant, to me it is an elephant. Your truth is your truth, and my truth is my truth. My truth is, this, and you're, no, no. Okay, look, the sun's hot. It don't matter who believes it, who don't believe it. That's absolute. Two and two is four. That can be proved. Two and two is four. You say, well, I, I was always, I just think it's eight. Well, that's your truth. That's your nut lie that you've told yourself. Two and two is four. So that's absolute. It has nothing to do with your opinion. It has nothing to do with the way you was raised. It has nothing to do with our background. It has nothing to do with our culture. It has nothing to do with your convictions. It has nothing to do with the dream you had. Two, two is four. And that's where the Bible is. The Bible is absolute truth. Does not matter what you think. Does not matter how you feel. Does not matter what you thought. Does not matter what somebody wrote. It's truth without error. I want the truth. Life's too short to go through it and believe in a lie, y'all. I want the truth. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed and every eye closed tonight. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Tonight, I want to ask you a question. Are you willing to face the truth? Are you willing to face the truth? You say, preacher, I've just been telling myself everything's all right, and I know it ain't. I'm full of the devil and backslid and everything else. I might as well just be honest tonight and get right with God. You just slip out of your seat and come on down here and let's pray. Let's get your heart right. Come on. Don't be too proud. Don't be too stubborn. Let the truth of God work in your heart. Amen. That's right. Others. Amen.
Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Brother Danny, I've just been dreading facing the truth. I dread it. I know it's there and I don't want to face it, but i got to face it. Might as well face the truth. Truth never hurt nobody. As old wise man said one time, truth won't hurt you. It may make you uncomfortable. It may make you uncomfortable for a while, but truth never hurt nobody. The truth's good for you. I want the truth. Tell me the truth. That's why I like to go to church. That's why I listen to preaching. I like the truth, brother. I like the truth. Truth has a ring to it. Truth has a ring to it that, that lies don't have. It just gets down in your heart. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night. Thank you that we got this study, the message, and the thought on the truth. I pray, God, that you'd help us to have the truth, to know the truth, believe the truth, accept the truth, preach the truth, tell the truth, and be a, a, a person identified with truth. And I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that you'd bless every single person here tonight, do what ought to be done in their life. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that you bless our church. Put your hand on Shining Light Baptist Church. I'm so thankful the doors are open. I'm glad we hadn't had to miss one service through all this pandemic. I'm thankful tonight, Lord, we've, the doors have been open here in the house of God. And I pray, God, that stay open till Jesus come. We can't do it by ourselves, but I pray that you would help us. We love you. In Jesus' name we ask it and for his sake. Amen. Amen.